Thank you for staying with us and welcome to Off the Press, where we go into newspaper review and check the major headlines in our national dailies. And we get into in-depth analysis. And joining me this morning on Off the Press, it's Ugo Chuku Ikiako. Thank you for staying with us this morning, Ugo Chuku. And we're going to go straight into the headlines this morning and we take from the Punch newspaper. LNNG pays $7 billion tax, $15 billion dividend to federal government, and that is in page 33 of the Punch newspaper. Hoodlums disrupt Oshun crossover party, governor ferried to safety. Federal government assaulted rule of law through misconduct, high-handedness, says the NBA. Don't rush to adopt ECOWAS currency, experts tell the federal government. And still in the Punch this morning, more knocks, less praise for Buhari on New Year's message. And that's in page two of the Punch newspaper. Buhari's case is hopeless. He won't change, says Yakase. President incapable of feeling Nigerians' pause, says the CSO. And ignore Commander-in-Chief critics, BMO tells Nigerians. Ondo reps appoints 220 aides to empower constituents. In page 12 of the Punch newspaper, groups demand Firo boss suspension, Nigerians berate minister. And last name the Punch, 2023 presidency, Northern Youths fought elders back south. Still, the major headlines is the president's letter to the nation on the first day of 2020. Yeah. Now, let's get talking about that. Buhari's case is hopeless. He won't change, says Yakase, president incapable of failing Nigerians' pause, says the CSO. Do you totally subscribe to these views? Yeah, I think I'll start with the pause. Uh, uh, the, the way Asurok was built, uh, I feel that anybody that goes inside that place is shielded truly from what is happening outside outside uh, outside the walls of Asurok. For example, uh, you, we could see pictures of the president of the United States. We could see the White House. We could, we could see people go there, take pictures, and all, all this sort of that. Yeah. So it, it feels like there's, there's still a level of connection between uh, the presidency in the White House and with the people. You could see, you could see uh, celebrities go there, take pictures. So it feels like when you go inside Asurok, the water that they drink there is different from the water that we have on the street. And the president himself have people that we call the yes men and the yes women, wherever, that what their, their main job is not to advise the president right. Their main job is to just be there and say and do whatever the president wants. And we've seen it already. The f his first four years, Nigerians weren't happy with him. Uh, the last, after the last election in February, March, and in, in the next couple of weeks, that would be one year of his second tenure. And also, everything that has happened thus far, the people themselves are not pleased with it. Uh, talking about the economy, the insecurity, uh, the rising unemployment. Uh, Nigeria is the poverty capital of the world. Uh, by, this, by now, we should be talking about reforms. We should be talking about, okay, what, have, what has the president done so far? Uh, what are we doing to reduce uh, the rising inequality um, between the south and the northern part of Nigeria? What are we doing to take our children off uh, from the street back to school? Uh, what are we doing to, to help uh, in terms of uh, 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 the, the killings and the fightings? And how are we building the bridges of unity across the country? We're not seeing that. So uh, I, I can understand when someone says that the president doesn't feel the post of the country. And it's the same thing with the wife of the president, with all the people working in Asurok. Uh, you see, uh, when people complain, the, 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 president, the presidential spokesperson, uh, Gaba Shewu or Femi Adeshina, yes. when they come out, they say things that are contrary to what people are experiencing on the street, uh, from the street of Zamfara down to Ebony State. It's still the same thing. I, I traveled during this period because of Christmas, and I moved from Lagos down to the southern part of the country, and it's still the same story. It's still the same music that people keep repeating to your ear, that the country is hard, life is difficult, it looks like the president is nowhere to be found. So uh, the people arrived saying that, and I also understand why people will say that uh, the president doesn't look like he will change. That's what, what Yakasi is Yakase, yes. he say is hopeless, and it's true, all right? Because uh, they say that uh, you can't change a low part skin. There's, there's, there's an African proverb, proverb like that. Over, if there's one thing I like about President Buhari, a lot of people say I don't like him, but if there's one thing I like about him is that he has remained committed to what he believes in over a long period of time. And it's difficult to change someone like that. He's, he's, not, he's not someone that believes in free market. He's not someone that believes in a lean government. He's not someone that believes in something. He's not someone that believes in restructuring. He feels that any, any argument, any, any conversation about restructuring Nigeria to have, like Olisa Bakova said yesterday, the former NBA chairman, that the model that we have, the, the model of federalism that we have in this country is not good. It, it doesn't all go well for the country. That if it is possible, we should move back to the 1963, uh, 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 what we had in 1963, where, where, where all the component union, yeah, unit was working. You had the, the Southwest, you had the Southeast. Yeah. So, so it's difficult for the president to listen to this conversation, to listen to this argument. Not just to, to see whether there, there is uh, hope in it to, to make changes that are needed. So for right. me, I understand all these things, and I understand why people are not happy with this message, because it's not just about the message, it's the action that follows the message. And as it stands at the moment, people are 
not, people are not pleased with what the president said, and, and it's a bad one for him. It shows that the, the, there is no trust in his government. Right. Let, let's take a look at what was said also in the news this morning by the NBA, the, the, the National Bar Association of Nigeria. The federal government assorted the rule of law through misconduct and high-handedness. How would you say the Buhari administration fared when it came to court orders, I mean, by the judiciary and everything that characterized the judiciary in, 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 the, last, in the last year? Uh, let's, let's, let's just speak for 2019 alone. Yes. I've, I've heard what, what the presidency did, what the executive did was a total embarrassment and rape of the judiciary. Right? It took four senators in the United States to, to write a letter for, before they released uh, Showere and uh, Exaki. So they, so sorry, uh, that's okay. that's okay. yeah. There, there has been court orders upon court orders. There have been preceding court orders, and you kept these guys against the will of the Constitution. The only reason that you did that was because you are afraid of sanctions from the U.S. government, or you are afraid of them not giving you the next loan that you are asking for. So. It, what the NBA is saying is true, but the NBA themselves has been complicit in making this thing happen so far. And they, they, they're not going to get out of it freely. You have, you, have, you have the vice president who, who is a lawyer, who, is, who was a former attorney general of Lagos State. You're not doing anything. There has not been sanction against your lawyers that go against what, what the NBA stands for. That, so at the end of the day, the NBA has had, they had a difficulty in 2019 with the government. And we've seen that because uh, the court said Liz Showare, they kept him. The court said Liz uh, Dasuki, they kept him. And there are other things. And we've seen uh, not just not just even uh, a Buhari administration, PDP governors across across Nigeria. I was just going to I was just about to say that because at the end of the day, the, the, the judiciary themselves we cannot but indict the judiciary because no, we, the, the bar the bar must be incorruptible. When you have sitting judges with several allegations against them, then one would wonder if the bar that is meant to be incorruptible, there's so much corruption found amongst them, then why wouldn't people go engage? The rules being passed by these people, and so we need to again take a critical look holistically at our judiciary system. Yeah, yeah, def definitely. Our judiciary system uh, is part of the challenge that we have in this in this part of the world. Our judiciary system have not proven themselves yeah. Yeah, to be uh, uh, to be infallible, they've, infallible, they've, incorruptible, incorruptible. They've not proven themselves. They've given people reasons to doubt them. They've given people reasons to say, okay, we don't trust you. And judiciary ought to be the last hope of the common man. Yes. They're supposed to be uh, blameless. But we've not seen that happen in Nigeria. We've seen we've seen judges uh, make money from nowhere. We've seen, we've seen judges do, do do crazy things that is not expected. You are not his pastor. You are not a David or any other person. The last case is the, is, a, is a former CJN. I mean, who asset declaration was saying he didn't declare his entire asset. Allege. You know, not declaration of yeah, yeah, because, be, assets. because what that does to, to the country and to us is that it sends a wrong signal. And that is the same thing that is happening in Abuja. So if you have a president that disobeys the court of law, that disobeys the rule of law, the, you give governors in Niger State, Abu, Abu Lulu, that just kept someone in prison. Yes. You give governor in a Cross River, Ben Ayade, to, to go after journalists that are doing their job, to go after private citizens that are just criticizing the government on Facebook. On, on Twitter. So it's, it's, it's a wrong trend for us. All right, let's take a look at the Vanguard newspaper this morning. Headlines in the Vanguard newspaper Late Olushola Saraki did not pay for revoked land, says the federal government. Minimum wage we are willing to pay, but Oyetola, no agreement yet with the Ondo government, says the NLC. INE Forex Windows records $626 billion turnover in 2019. NBA again slams federal government, says it grossly assaulted the rule of law in 2019. Foreign reserves dropped by 10.4% to $38.78 billion in 2019. And the big story, what Buhari must do differently this year, Afeni Fere, Arua Yud, Ohanese, and Pandev. Buhari can better the economy, security, says the Ohanese, ADF, and Asetu. Declare emergency on, on security, economy, says the Arua Youth. Reorganize top hierarchy of armed forces. Pandev is calling for this. He sounds like a broken record, says Afeni Fere and Khan. Let's burn on some of these concerns quickly. Well, see, uh, these are these are the uh, Afeni Fere, Khan, Pandev, no. and Andres oh, and oh, and So these these are organizations that that has a national spread across the country. Ohanezes for the South South, Khan for the Christian, Pandev and the rest of them. Afeni Fere for the Yorubas. Uh, Yakasi speaks for uh, some set of people in the northern part yeah, of the northern part of the northern part of in the part of the north. So already it shows that the country itself. Is not happy with the president. If the ACF, the Ariwa Conservative Forum, led by Yakasi, if the Ohaneze, uh, by Wudu, uh, if Kant, the Christian Association of Nigeria, yes. and Pandev and the rest of them, what they're saying is that the president, you've not done so well in 2019. He, he, he didn't make us proud as a president. So my issue is that do we have a listening president? If there's one thing that the Bari administration has proven over the last few years is that they, are, they don't listen to the people. They don't listen to the cry of the people. The most important thing that from what everybody is saying across Punch Vanguard is that the economy 
supposed to be better in 2020. And how do you do that? All right. So last year, uh, in, in a shabby manner, there was there was an economic council that was constituted that had the Doyin Salami, yes. the Soludo, and the rest of them. Uh, these guys are pro free market, and the rest of them we've not seen their we've not seen their impact in the economy. So is there any is there another economic team that is advising the president contrary to the, what we know? So for me, the most important thing, uh, if the president if the president wants to win the trust of the people in 2020, it's very simple. Allow, allow, allow the market to, ha to, to, to get back to being the market. Uh, let, 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 let the economy become better. Uh, respect the rule of law. We don't, want, we don't want the same thing that happened in 2019 when a show or any other person. And you make it, you make it difficult for people to, you know, to trust you, to yes. say you're, you're doing well as a president, because you're okay. not. Now, you, you're a political analyst and commentator. Let, let's spoil a little bit on the economy, because people are saying, hey, you can do better for the economy. Our economy seems pretty sclerotic right now. Yeah. And it seems like only radical reforms can bring about the change we want. What, what would be some of those reforms you want to see for the economy in 2020 by this current administration? Um, First, for me, would be uh, to open up the borders. You're very particular about it, it, the opening it, it, of the to borders. Open, to open up the borders because the, the, the issue is this: when, when we talk about the border, we, we're not talking. We, we think it's just about people, uh, the, the, the smugglers coming in. We have Nigerian communities across across that part, across different borders, uh, different part of the country doing business. And also, whenever you do that, you shrink businesses. Right, so it makes it difficult for people that sell uh, tomatoes, oranges, and the rest of them, even in the my two market and the rest of them, to have import from Benin, any other part of the world. We we'll have an ECOWAS treaty that allows us to trade among ourselves. So that is the first thing that we need to do. And also, the, our monetary policy has been a mess. Right, so we, we woke up one day, the CBN will do this one, and the CBN will do that one. So at this point, we need somebody that understands that has a that, that in a way that the monetary policy will favor the people, so that we we'll have a stable monetary policy. Because if we don't have a stable monetary policy, it makes it difficult for an investor. Because an investor needs to the look monetary at monetary policy. Sorry to cut you in. We, we have a, there's still a dichotomy between our monetary policy and our fiscal policy. There, there, there has to be there has to be some blend between those two, and which is the crux of our, our problem economically. And that, that's right. that, that's the next thing I want to say because yeah. the, if if you don't have a marriage of the these two, two yes. it's, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult for you to convince someone to put in money into your economy. And it's going to be difficult. And also, another thing that is key is that economy thrives around security. And for example, investors can easily come to Lagos and put, and put in their money here and maybe say some southwestern state because the economy, the, the, the security is a bit stable. But we neglect a, a, a big part of the country, which is the, the northern part of Nigeria, uh, the, the middle belt. If 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 if, if this security is stable across this part of this part of the country, yes. and I, because they they are heavy on agriculture, if you start attracting investors to Middle Belt to the northern part of Nigeria because our security is, is stable, it will do a lot. It will help the people. It will help those communities to to make, to make more money. It will help those. It will help the economy to push up. So we we'll have to fix security and economy. And if we can do that within the first quarter of 2020, the, the year will be better for us. But if you right. can't, it will be a worse year. All right, and quickly we'll look at the headlines in the This Day newspaper. Iowa youths advocate power shift to South-South in 2023. Interesting news headline this morning in This Day newspaper. 20 Nigerians who will shape Nigeria's policy and politics in 2020. And I want to read out a few of those names this morning. We have the president himself, the incumbent President Mahmoud Buhari, Ex-President Obasanjo, um, Oshimbajo, the VP, Atiku, uh, who was an aspiring president under the PDP in the last election, Lawan, and we have Abakiari, Tinubu, Emefile, Ovia, Oshomale, and Mele, and Dangote, Wigwe, Magu, Falana, um, Fayemi, Agbaje, Wike, Mwodo, and Zainab Mohammed. 20 Nigerians who will shape Nigeria's policy and politics in 2020. Let's first butter on how our youth advocate power shift to South South in 2023. Should we take this with a pinch of salt? Um, advocating that the next president should be allowed to come from the South South to do the eight year term. I think, I, I think, I think I'm, I'm presently surprised with what, what IYU is saying, but I'll take it with a pinch of salt because uh, one day is a lot in politics. One day is a lot in politics. There's mm -hmm. something I've learned working within this space that one day is a lot in politics. A lot, a lot can shift. Uh, the same people that say, give us this, is like tomorrow they will say this, uh, that. But for me, I'm, uh, the most important thing, not 2023 now, the most important thing that we, we need to make sure that the country works for us. We need, to, we need to make sure that we have a country by 2023. Yes. 2023 is three years from, three years from today. So a lot, of, a lot of things can go wrong uh, in our trajectory as a nation. And if we don't fix that, we might not have a country in 2023. So what we need to do, what IY youth need to do, what Middle Belt youth need to do, what South, South, South and South is, or wherever, is for us to 
put pressure on our president. It's for us to say, Mr. President, there are things that are, there are, things that are sacrosanct to us. Make the economy work. Let people have freedom to say what they want to say. Let people have freedom to worship whatever they want to worship in this country. Let, don't, don't intimidate people. Don't, don't make the country difficult for us. And if we can do that, then 2023 will take care of itself. It's still far from me. That shouldn't be the objective at this point. All right, 20 Nigerians who will shape Nigeria's policy and politics in 2020 and some notable names. Yeah, some, some, notable, some notable names. I just I don't understand why uh, this day does not have a female on that, on that page. Oh, there's, there, is, there is Zainab Ahmed here. Okay, Zainab, Zainab Ahmed is here. Yeah. Zainab Ahmed. So, yes. so for, apart from, but the thing is this, uh, you see people in the economy, you see the MFLA, the mm -hmm. Wige, and yeah. the Abadje, and the rest of them. And you see the Abakari. Uh, a few, few of them, it's going to be a difficult year for us uh, in terms of policy and the rest of them because we're, we're gradually moving into an election year. So there'll be a lot of backstabbing, uh, back, uh, back yeah. fighting. Already we've seen it in Edo State, Opaseki versus Oshimole. So that will continue to happen. Uh, but there are a few people that, for me, that would tell me what will happen this year. Abakari is one of them. Uh, he's, he's the president's ear and he's president, wherever yeah. the president does. So Abakari will play a critical role. Uh, Tinibu as well will play a critical role because uh, it seems that towards the end of 2019, a lot of things moved against his favor. So uh, he's going to come back to being Tinibu again. And that will bring a lot of drama and a lot of conversation into the politics. And uh, Fatiku and the PDPs. I don't think they're serious. They've not proven themselves serious for us to consider them already. And we we'll see what is happening because if you call yourself an opposition party, right, your governors are doing poorly well. What is Atiku saying against the governor, like governors like Ayede that are busy um, imprisoning journalists? Yes. What is PDP saying? They're not doing anything. So for me, PDP doesn't even have a moral right to say anything against the APC because you've not proven yourself to be worthy. So you shouldn't, you shouldn't be disturbing us in 2020 if you guys can't get back to your house and fix your house and compare your governors to do well because the PDP governors are not doing excellently well as well. Yeah. So because we we'll focus on the president at, at sometimes and forget that there are PDP governors that, in, uh, wh wh why will Ayede uh, do me money? Why are they making it difficult for people to say things and to to speak freely in 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 a quiet bombing across river and across the part of the country all right we'll go to go and lastly we have the daily song with us this morning the first headline in the daily song southwest security outfit amote kun begins january 9 says fire me ohaneze a fenny fair and middle belt forum set agenda for buhari but arabi musa Kokori, others also. And CBN Bankers Committee begins redevelop redevelopment of National Art Theatre. Minimum wage, NLC directs state councils to stand by over deadline. Bauchi Kano Katsina begins implementation of Shun Gets Committee. Our story on eviction of High Commission in Ghana, the federal government. Abia 2023. It's you call for leaders insist on governorship, and that's in page 10. And lastly, in the, the Daily Sun this morning, Buhari's promise to leave office in 2023. No news, says the PDP. He has retweet, retweeted over and over again that he has no ambition for 2023. I think, I, think, I, think, I think it's news, right? Because we've seen countless number of times, especially in, this, in, in our part of the world, Sub-Saharan Africa, where, where our leaders, African leaders, always want to stay in power till they die. Mm. They are there, like maybe they live there like one week after, or maybe before one week before they die, and rest of them. So it's still news. And if Barry is retreating that, it shows that already there is, there is, uh, people are beginning to think that this man will stay beyond 2023. Because and the concern is the, the bill can be amended at any point the bill in can time. Be, the, and can't, so, and you can't trust politicians. So you for you can't trust work. politicians, especially the National Assembly that we have, because we have a plant National Assembly. We saw what uh, Femi Baba Jamila said a few days, I think on Christmas Day, to his constituency in, in, in Surrey, that they are there to work with the presidency. So when you have a plant National Assembly, that, that the last bill, they, they just passed the bill in a very hazard, hazardous manner. Just they, there was no there was no conversation around the bill to make sure that the, 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 the budget for this year was not bloated. So if you have such national assembly, you should be worried. And uh, setting an agenda for the president, we're, we're not the one that's supposed to set an agenda for the president. The president's supposed to set an agenda for us. And the way it is, the president has come out with a letter to say, okay, this is what I intend to do in 2020. It's our duty as active citizens across the country, uh, irrespective of our religion and political uh, affiliation, to say, okay, to keep the president on check, to, yes. to demand and to make sure that the Democracy is what it is because of its citizen. And if we can't do that in 2020, uh, the country will continue to get worse. I want to Ugo Chuku, Kalkal, political analyst and commentator. What is your good message to Nigerians for the year 2020? I, 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 for me, I know it's difficult to say, but we don't have any other country. Uh, we don't have any other country. We'll have a part to play, uh, both the followers and the leaders. And if, if our leaders are not doing it right, we'll have a responsibility to, to act as check and balances to them. Uh, your leader is not doing anything. He has not paid salaries and rest of them. Next time you see him in shop, right? Next time you see him somewhere, you're clapping for him, seeing that he's the next best thing after, after sliced bread. You are not doing yourself any good. The roads are bad. You're not saying anything. So get on, get on your social media. Get on whatever you can do. Uh, 
act, check on your representative, check on your senators. That is the what we can do as activist citizens. And most importantly, we have to keep believing in our country. We have to keep doing our best to make sure that uh, even if we don't have a good country that we are proud of, that our children can inherit something that is better than what we have here. So for me, right. just let's keep believing and keep pushing and trusting God that God will help us as a nation. Ugo Chukwikako, thank you very much for joining me on Off the Press this morning. And that is all we can take this morning on Off the Press. Do join us again tomorrow, same time. It's been Off the Press. I am Benny Ark, and this is Plus TV Africa. Do stay with us. Good morning.